Hello, greetings. Uh, this is me again, Zahra Jawad. So I kind of uh, lose it. I uh, became very scared of shaitan. I went to this uh, ayat, uh, like you know, if you've seen my past videos. Uh, if you're new, welcome. Uh, this is me, Zahra Jawad, an ex Shia Muslim, and an ex Muslim. So, I usually don't give my opinions, but I discuss the Qur'an ayats directly and where there really is a necessity to go to a hadith or read the Shia <coughs> sayings, uh, interpretations of the Qur'an ayats which our religious scholars have done, uh, given to them by our Imams, then I do that. Otherwise, no. <coughs> so where I can see the discrepancies and all this? In the Qur'an ayats first, and then go to the hadiths of the Imams, and there's some Sunni hadiths if they're necessary, and sometimes to Sunni hadiths, uh, you know, finding something ridiculous or then I go there too and show you. So this is my way. Uh, the way I took, maybe to show you the truth and uh, not much of tafsir and God knows what of the Qur'ans, but uh, the translations and from the Qur'an ayats as much as I can. So now in my last live stream videos also, I, up, I, I spoke about uh, this uh, shaitan in Surah Saad, the ayat number I've forgotten, 85, 84 maybe, 80, uh, before the 83, something like that. I don't want to go there uh, because I'm very scared. <coughs> so I may have scared you that la hawla la nothing works because the chosen ones are the saviors. Since Shaitan, eh, from that uh, had us ayat, sorry, not hadith, Quran ayat uh, in Surah Saad says that by God's might, Allah's might, by your might, I will lead them astray. However, I had insights and I gave my opinion because again there are these Quran ayats. For example, in Surah Fusilat, don't remember the number of the ayat. They say that. Uh, uh, seek refuge in Allah from Satan's whisperings, right? And when people say, uh, when they say, believers, that Allah is one and remains steadfast, the angels descend on them. So, there are these uh, Quran ayats too, which uh, contradict the other ayats. Uh, that I've seen, uh, I don't know, I might, so I'm confused about them, and I'll say I'm confused. So, <clears throat> so I'm saying I'm confused about them, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, we were, uh, and uh, not only that in Shia Islam, we were told, but that uh, I see through the Quran eyes, that, uh, yes, uh, only the chosen ones will be saved. So we have to stay with Rasulullah and the, thereafter the Imams chosen by God and uh, or the Khalifa representative of Allah after prophethood, after the seal of the Prophet Muhammad. So it has to be that way. So the, there are these uh, contradictions. Like, can Allah alone save you? Uh, so, uh, maybe then we need not be too, too scared of that a shaitan is in us, shaitan is in our minds. How can we use our reasoning? And, uh, we have to cling on to the chosen ones of Allah. Otherwise, uh, we'll go astray. Right? We have to say, Ya Ali Madad. Since Imam Ali is 
yeah, hel- yeah, you know, is one of the chosen ones, uh, Mukhlasi, and all this. Allah is not enough to save us. Uh, so in some Quran ayats, from that I gathered uh, that Allah, Allah's might, uh, through Allah's might, and what is Allah's might? Unlimited. So how shaitan can work on that? I'm having a breakdown uh, here. You may be, uh, you can tell by, you know, may be able to tell by my voice. <laughs> so I'm very scared. <laughs> So I feel it's a great human tragedy, these religions, monotheistic religions, make us feel like sinners and just, I feel like crying. Yeah, so I have broken down here. And uh, so about uh, the shaitan, when I read those eyes in Surah Sa, like, my opinion, in my opinion, or is there a contradiction in the Quran? I, sorry. So I may have scared you people, but it is scary. Although there are other ads that say take refuge in Allah from Satan. <laughs> it's really strange. Like how much can they, <laughs> you know. If you read Surah Saad ayat and then you read these ads in Surah Fusilat. <clears throat> really what a tragedy, I still cannot, cannot understand. Uh, so yes, uh, where, see I'm seeing here that I'm confused, maybe seemingly like Imam Ali had said in Najul Palaha. Uh, so uh, that seemingly there are contradictory ayats in the Quran, but when you, you know, read them in the light of uh, Imam Ali may explain it, uh, I don't know what he said really. Uh, so, like that, uh, what was the solution to the seemingly contradictory ayats, but the other ayats in the Qur'an that then make sense and it all falls into perspective. <coughs> so, nice uh, that we have this one Allah, and in Surah Fasilat we are told that those who say Allah is one and then remain steadfast, that our Lord is Allah, and then remain, remain steadfast, Sorry if I can't uh, remember the ayat verbatim, but just the gist of it and uh, right now. Uh, so then the angels descend on them and all this. And uh, maybe the mukhlasin, the angels descend on them. Uh, th- these mukhlasin are chosen by Allah, as we are told in also, the your chosen ones, like in the other ayats, who are the, these chosen ones, and what is their position? Uh, like in Surah Ali Imran, right? Uh, I just uh, so if I've made any mistakes, you can correct me. I am quite uh, disabled, disorientated, and uh, shocked. Hello, yeah. So I took a break here. It's in Surah Al Imran, and finally got the courage to open the Quran. <coughs> Sorry, online. <coughs> Excuse me. Quran, uh, Quran.com, uh, Surah, chapter 3, ayat 33. Indeed, Allah chose Adam. And uh, some Muslims say, why, why can't you be the chosen one? I've heard a Muslim ask me this question, and uh, I just kept quiet. Uh, how can I? Uh, I thought, or maybe I said, no, I cannot be the chosen one because the chosen ones are, um, you know, Allah mentions their names in the Quran who are the chosen ones. So not all of us are chosen. We cannot even say we are chosen. So it's indeed Allah chose Adam and Noah and the family of Abraham and the family of Imran over the worlds. Uh, so, uh, she was a non-Shia who asked me this question. Uh, so I thought I would, because there's so much uh, differences, uh, and uh, people, some of us, even Muslims, you know, they have all these different views, and uh, 
they ask why we cannot be the chosen ones and someone asked me that and didn't perhaps get a satisfactory reply because I'll have to I'd have to search in the Quran and get all these uh, ayats where, where it's mentioned who are the chosen ones and why we cannot be the chosen ones because God has chosen them above all universe God prepared them and chose them so this and uh, what else uh, so about the uh, shaitan like uh, when I was reading Surah Saad I might uh, so it's very hard on my mind and my being maybe my soul Surah Saad Ayat let me see if I can go there uh, so if you read this Ayat it seems like oh my god no one can save you except the chosen ones so that's my opinion I was saying you know not even the Hawla Ula Quwwat can save you but there are Quran Ayats like in Surah Fasilat uh, that uh, say that Allah says seek refuge in Allah in Him uh, to uh, from the whispering or from shaitan's whispering or something like this from shaitan so here we have uh, in uh, why am I here Surah Sabia to tell you that this shaitan so I was just going crazy saying you know I just broke uh, it's uh, very very terrible for me uh, shaitan is not in me shaitan is not in me uh, and the voices start to come, kind of. Allah said, so indeed you are of those reprieved. I'm starting with the ayat 80 of Surah Saad, 38th chapter of the Quran. Now 81, until the day of the time well known, 80, 82, uh, the, uh, Iblis said, by your might, I will surely mislead them all. So this is uh, terrible, right? Uh, if you will mislead them all, all in the wrong. I will put them all in the wrong. Yusuf Ali translation. Before that, I was reading Sahih International translation. 83, except among them your chosen servants. So um, purified by thy grace. Allah said the truth. So this, this, this ayat uh, means that uh, we better cling to the chosen servants, and they are the ones. And the ayat said, "Obey Allah and obey the Messenger." So we have to obey uh, Allah's Messenger. Otherwise, if you just obey Allah and not Allah's Messenger, it can't be. Then you can't be a Muslim. Uh, Things like that, right? Uh, I'm not able to explain this properly. Except that some servants amongst them, sincere and purified by their grace. A Yusuf Ali tra translation of Ayat 83 in Surah Saad. Um, by thy graces in brackets. So they have received the grace. And you know that Allah and the angels send the blessings and all this on, the, on this messenger. You also send blessings on. There's an ayat there in the Quran, Surah Azza. So this ayat really, uh, this, uh, you see, this uh, again, uh, the shaitan thing. Uh, why, I mean, why are they chosen? And why are we not chosen and blessed? Sorry, this was a message. Uh, why are we not uh, blessed? Why can't we? Surah Fat Ayat, right? Everyone is like Allah, Allah, Allah. Some Muslims, you know, very much only Allah, only Allah. You see, uh, here we are told in Surah Fat, in order that you, O man, may believe in Allah and His Messenger, that you may assist and honor Him. Why don't you assist yourself, honor yourself? Why doesn't God assist us? And uh, we can honor ourselves. Honor Him meaning honor this Messenger. And he doesn't ask for any reward, we are told, for this message. But what we have to do is believe in Allah and his messenger 
that you may assist, help him and honor him and celebrate his praise morning and evening. Very good, Yusuf Ali. So Yusuf Ali doesn't put IE Allah here in uh, I'm on now uh, this uh, myislam.org website on this Quran ayat, Surah Fat ayat 9. So why can't uh, Allah, every human being who believes in one Allah, should uh, Allah should say celebrate each of yours, praise morning and evening. We should have it, right, uh, for ourselves. You see, he doesn't have an ego. Why should also we have an ego? Our egos have dropped. We are the chosen ones, so we are the graced ones by Allah. And uh, no problem of ego. And you can celebrate your praise morning and evening, each one of us. Why not? Tell me, why not? We are the sinners. We are below even his messenger. Because uh, what did we do? Because we prefer the life of this world and we don't look for the truth. We didn't look for the true Allah. We, but there's so many Muslims now, 1400 years have passed. And so why don't you uh, so you are not, uh, you, ca you can never become his messenger, right? And who wants to impart this message like this, that you assist him, honor him, celebrate his praise morning and evening. Glory, celebrate Allah's glory morning and evening. This would, okay, even if you put it this way, like Abu al-Alam Maududi has put it, translating the Qur'an ayat, uh, review, um, so that all of you may all believe in Allah and His Messenger and support Him and rev revere Him and celebrate Allah's glory. Although word by word in the Qur'an ayat is not put this way, but uh, celebrate Allah's, yani Allah's name is not put there. Glory, morning and evening. Actually, you're worshipping God. Uh, so is there a difference between what you think in this ayat, Allah and His Messenger? You are worshipping both of them. Honor Him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that you glorify. Now this one, Mahsan Khan, in his translation has put Allah, uh, and that you glorify Allah's. So Allah's is in bracket, and then close bracket, praises morning and afternoon. So it's always that our ego would be developed. You see, Hazrat Ibrahim was shown. This I found out. So why aren't we shown? Which ayat was it that he was shown? Here. Uh, which ayat? Uh, I'm just looking for the ayat. Hello, greetings. I just found her. Uh, I was going to Surah Anam first about Abraham, God showing Abraham, but here under uh, Surah Anam, verse 36, those who listen in truth, be sure, will accept. So as to the dead, Allah will raise them up, then will they be turned unto him. Only those who pay attention to the call of the Holy Prophet with an open heart and with fairness of mind will accept the truth and believe in the Holy Prophet. This is the criteria. Because if people listen to the truth sincerely and earnestly, they must believe. If their spiritual faculty is dead, meaning my spiritual faculty is dead, then they are like the dead. They cannot escape being brought to the faith to face the judgment on the day of resurrection. Aka Medipuya says, notwithstanding the universality of the teachings of the Holy Prophet, the real purpose of the divine guidance is to provide guidance to those who have enlightened minds and spiritual integrity. 
to use their free will, to use their free will and intention in order to choose the right path and walk on it. Imam Jafar, Imam Jafar Sadiq said, Imam Jafar bin Muhammad al Sadiq said, do not try, do not even like, do not try to increase the number of the uh, true faithfuls by inviting those who do not possess the essential intelligence and tendency for development and progress. Certainly Allah has pointed out in verse 17 and 18 of uh, Surah Zumar, uh, the men of understanding who study, examine, rationalize and through their free will and candid intention make a choice of the path of Allah and reject the suggestions made by shaitan. So do not try to increase the number of the true faithfuls by inviting those who do not possess, by inviting them who do not possess these uh, qualities, essential intelligence and tendency. Anyhow, this I wanted to add in this video for the record. Uh, so, so uh, 37 of Surya Nam verse, I'll just read out. They say, why is not a sign sent down to him from his Lord? Say, Allah had the certainly power to send down a sign, but most of them understand not. Uh, we don't have... Uh, here again, refer to the commentary of verse 35 of the surah. Signs were all around them, but they did not understand. They picked holes in anything that uh, descended to their level of intelligence. Also refer to the commentary of the preceding verse. By most of them do not know. Uh, by quote, quotation mark, most of them do not know, close quotation mark, majority has been censored. So like we say, the uh, Shias say, Sunnis are in my majority, right, the Muslims, Sunni Muslims. So that doesn't matter, like, they can say what they like against the Shias and all this. Uh, it makes no difference to us because God has already told us in the Quran uh, that it's not the majority that counts. Even in Islam, like, they call us kafirs, but uh, they call the Shias kafir. I mean, I have been a Shia, so I know. And there are videos on the YouTube also, you can see. So it doesn't matter really. However, I could be dead, like, because my rationality, when I am used using my reason, also being scared, uh, how can I trust in my reason? How can I trust in my intelligence? Since uh, you know, shaitan can come in the mind. So we are told in Surah Fusilla to take uh, refuge in Allah from Satan and uh, then read these ayahs and be uh, like uh, do ablutions. So only the pure can touch this uh, in Surah Waqiyah. Trying to figure out uh, the religion in detail has been explained in the Quran. Sorry, I'm reading a commentary under <coughs> verse 38. Holy Prophet, uh, knowledge of everything in the universe has been given to the Holy Prophet. Therefore, the people have been commanded to carry out the orders of the Holy Prophet. Al Imran, verse 32 and 132, uh, Surah Maida, <coughs> excuse me, uh, verse 92, Hashar, verse 7, Surah Hashar, meaning. Because nor does he speak of his own desire, 
it is not but revelation revealed najam 3 uh, verses 3 and 4 and the quran contains everything surah anam verse 59 on this basis the holy prophet declared that he is the city of knowledge and ali is its gate so the holy prophet and after him ali and the holy imams among the ahlul bayt okay this are authorized to deal with ahlul bayt surah nisa ayat 59 maida 55 and 67 are authorized to deal with and make known details pertaining to nature and all that which has been created by Allah. Uh, so let's see if I can find something else. Those who reject our signs are deaf and dumb, in the midst of darkness profound. Whom Allah willeth, he leaveth to wonder. Whom he willeth, he placeth on the way that is straight. <laughs> so, thank you to yourselves. If there come upon you the wrath of Allah or the hour, would you then call upon other than Allah? Reply if you are truthful. Hour of wrath. Who would you call on? Allah or other than Allah? Uh, call on. I would say call on Allah. Oh my goodness, enable him to see Allah, the Imam advised him to meet him. I'm just reading the commentary section again some other day. On one occasion he met the Imam while he was standing beside the river and repeated his request. As directed by the Imam, his companions tied the hands and legs of the man <coughs> and threw him to the, in, in the river. While struggling to save himself from drowning, he solicited <laughs> So yeah, sorry, uh, this I found really funny. Um, so I had to take a break. Uh, <laughs> the uh, commentary here under this ayat 40 of Surya Anam, uh, I read a little bit of it. When uh, a man asked Imam Jafar bin Muhammad al Sadiq to enable him to see Allah, the Imam advised him to meet him some other day. On one occasion, he met the Imam while he was standing beside the river and repeated his request. As directed by the Imam, his companions tied the hands and legs of the man and threw him in the river. While struggling to save himself from drowning, he solicited help from every man standing there one by one, but none came to his rescue. Losing all hopes, he cried, O oh God, help me. When he was about to go down under the water, then the Imam took him out from the river and asked him, Did you see Allah? He said, Yes, my master. The Imam said, you cannot see Allah with your eyes. You can uh, see him through your sight, you, uh, through your insight by realizing his essential existence. So this is the commentary um, and what Imams have given us. Under this ayat, they say, thank you to yourselves. If there come upon you the wrath of Allah or the hour that you dread, would you then call upon other than Allah? Reply if you are truthful. Uh, other than Allah. The pagans who believe in false gods must call upon the imaginary deities whom they worship imaginary deities who, whom they worship. But instead they cry out to Allah in moments of extreme helplessness, danger and affliction. In utter helplessness, unable to find help from any quarter, the inner self of every human being, be he an unbeliever, 
is liberated from the obstinance, obstinacy of personal views <laughs> and commands to cry for the help of the omnipotent and the omniscient Lord. Uh, and yet another ayat, Surah Nam, verse 41, Nay, on him would you call, and if it be his will, he would remove the distress which occasioned your call upon him, and you would forget the false gods which you join with him. So this is like from Surah Fatiha also. We do not call on anyone except you. We worship none but you, right? However, he has sent help here. Oh, so I would, uh, yes, I would. Uh, in Surah Nisa, we are told uh, the men, child, uh, women and children pray to Allah to send a helper from among, from himself. So they prayed to Allah, but they prayed for a helper to be sent down. Sometimes he removes the distress from uh, you uh, when you call upon him, and then he sends his grace and answers your prayer, and he removes the distress from you, the feeling of distress. He gives you patience and he, a feeling of, uh, you know, that you're you are consoled. But sometimes uh, man is required, human being chosen, like we are told in the Quran ayahs, these chosen beings whom Allah has uh, raised above all the worlds to guide us, to help us, even in our spiritual uh, enlightenment and progress. <coughs> so, a very uh, like confusing for me, uh, this has not been settling in me uh, about, you know, telling the idol worshippers that uh, you call your imaginary deities and uh, you will leave them when uh, whom they worship, but instead they cry out, the pagans who believe in false gods must, must call upon the imaginary deities whom they worship, but instead they cry out to Allah in moments of extreme helplessness, danger and affliction. So this we are told in the commentary section under 40, that they, in extreme helplessness, uh, they, instead of calling out to their imaginary deities, uh, they, call, they do call out to Allah. Uh, and then continuing here with the commentary, in utter helplessness, unable to find help from any quarter, the inner self of every human being, be he an unbeliever, is liberated from the obstinacy of personal views and commands to cry for the help of the omnipotent and omniscient Lord. <coughs> this we understand in extreme helplessness, we cry, but still I don't fully grasp this. Uh, because uh, sometimes uh, a human being uh, <coughs> can help us. However, it says in extreme helplessness, only God's help comes. And uh, when no one is able to help us, then only they say, like they say, only you can help yourself. <clears throat> That's to an extreme helplessness, danger and affliction, extreme, inner, like you have a religious, or you have a crisis inside, soul crisis, or a spiritual crisis, confusion, 
uh, then only and only this one God helps us. So regarding the commentary and the Quran ayat, mostly the commentary, when it says imaginary deities, uh, the pagans also left in extreme helplessness to call on that Allah, but Allah, only Allah. Uh, the thing is that one could also say that uh, then in extreme helplessness, even Prophet Muhammad and the chosen ones uh, could not help, right? And then uh, we leave them, because then I, I, on, when the hour comes, I wouldn't even be calling on my mom uh, as a Shia. Let's say I again put myself, like when I put myself in, back to the sh into the shoes of my, uh, um, my Shia religion, then wouldn't I uh, stop calling on Ya Ali Madad? Uh, wouldn't say Ya Ali Madad or Ya Imam, Imam Akhir, last Imam, help us. Our Savior, La Savior, I would say, God help us. So it uh, could be like this uh, in both ways, for both ways, right? Whether it is one Allah, and this is where the Sunni Muslims and the Shia Muslims <laughs> have been, uh, uh, Sunni Muslims don't think they've been confused because they go straight to that extreme helplessness case and then they would say, <coughs> why do these Shias call, say, Ya Ali, call on Ali, when we have Nadi Ali also, and we do call on Ali. And uh, then why did, uh, in Surah Tahrim, God say, uh, in that ayat, that uh, uh, not only Allah is his protector, but that Gabriel <coughs> and uh, the righteous among the believers and moreover the angels are his assistant so again about that uh, uh, the commentary of the imams written by our religious scholars Shia religious scholars that the imaginary deities they leave again explaining uh, that we can also leave our imams and extreme helplessness, only Allah can help. And not even Imam can help at that time. Uh, and aren't these, uh, what uh, I was thinking about this ayat, I'll just, my opinion, that if those idols are imaginary, as uh, the Quran ayat, no, the commentary section also says, uh, given to us by our Imams, and written by the religious scholars, Shia religious scholars. Uh, you see here, God uh, shows Abraham uh, which one? 70 Surah Anam verse, which uh, I had wanted to go to, but I stopped at the previous uh, ayahs and commentaries. And now here I am. So also did we show Abraham the power and the laws of the heavens and the earth that he might with understanding have certitude. This is the translation uh, of uh, Yusuf Ali seven, on uh, verse 75. Uh, so uh, he was shown this and then I was thinking these prophets had visions and righteous servants of chosen servants of Allah had visions so could it just be imaginary vis visions but we don't say that because you know uh, the thing is that they uh, to exploit this one power uh, that is ultimate power uh, that even the pagans have known about it perhaps you know when they leave their imaginary deities <clears throat> to call on Allah, our Imams have said in that commentary section I read before. So, 
It's very easy to, when they call on Allah, so they, they also knew that there was in the, these pagans who came across helplessness, extreme helplessness, they also know that there is one hakikat, one true reality, which is the most powerful. So could Abraham have had these, exploited this and then used this, so also did we show Abraham the power and the laws of the heavens and the earth that he might have certitude. So this point put forward by me about this ayat and uh, notwithstanding, I mean, you know, that uh, Allah showed him the signs, his laws and his power. So in the Bible, Old Testament, we are shown that uh, these uh, righteous servants of Allah, God or Yahweh, they had visions and they saw this, you know, extreme angels and power and chariots. God knows very powerful things. In their visions, it was shown to them by Yahweh. Uh, so that, by their God, uh, these extreme visions uh, that they had, uh, the power, seeing the power and the laws of the heavens and the earth, shown to them in the visions. Here it doesn't say in the vision, uh, in, in Abraham's vision, but it just says uh, that Abraham was shown and thus with understanding had certitude here. So sometimes even in an extreme traumatized case, another point has come up, so I'm just, uh, you know, in a disorderly manner, uh, let me just put this point, uh, that in trauma, in such confusion, in such fear of hell and shaitan, using the mind of Allah, can we not, uh, with so, you know, unable, helpless that we give in, uh, out of fear also, we give in to a human being. He says he's the servant of Allah, and without reasoning we give in. But, however, uh, yes, our, our Imams uh, have said that, no, no, don't, uh, you know, these people who don't come, they will have to go up Suryana, uh, that uh, they have no, re re that intelligence, sincerity and integrity, and they are dead. Right? But on the other hand, uh, they also say that, uh, like, don't try to bring them, because they are dead people. But then in extreme cases, like, you put that fear in us, right, uh, that the shaitan, what is said in Surah Saad, I might not be able to say this properly or do uh, justice to this, but let me just try. Then, uh, you know, in that extreme fear that uh, these people have given us, uh, that uh, God's wrath and punishment and hellfire, eternal sometimes, uh, sometimes for a long period, sometimes forever. <clears throat> Could we also, uh, you know, our, not be able to use our intellectual faculties properly? in that trauma, and seeking God's help, desperate, not be able to use the reasoning, because reason cannot help us at that time. And then we, what happens is, they tell us that there's one God, and shaitan uses his might to lead us astray, and we are the chosen servants of Allah. <clears throat> and what does it say in Surah Saad, the way it says there, right? That uh, these, then, leading all of them astray, and hell is there, uh, whoever follows Satan, hell is their uh, eternal abode or something like that. So the hellfire, uh, the, uh, the 
thing of hellfire is there, right? Wouldn't that uh, tarnish or uh, our intellectual faculties to think? Straight, without fear, when there's no fear. Imam does say that uh, you should not force people, they have a free will and these people are dead. They should not uh, be called to this because very intelligent, intellectual who use their reason, who have integrity, intellectual in it integrity, uh, only they can be called to this. Truth. So, Iblis, he was arrogant, except Iblis, he was arrogant. Then we are told that uh, Allah asks Iblis, what prevents thee from prostrating thyself to one whom I have created with my hands? With my hands. It means, uh, in brackets would mean might and whatever they say. Uh, so, might and power. Allah said, Oh, please, what prevents thee from prostrating thyself? But I can't see that might and power. Uh, in brackets, uh, with, you know, after the hands of Allah. Okay, uh, prostrating thyself to one whom I have created with my hands. Art thou haughty or art thou one of the high and mighty ones? He said, I'm better than him. You created me from fire and created him from clay. Allah said, then get out of uh, paradise, for indeed you are expelled. And indeed upon you is my curse until the day of recompense. And I might forget my, uh, what was the point here? So yeah, the hell point, where is it? Respite then is granted thee until the time. As I'm skipping some, until I reach her. So this Iblis said, by your might, I will surely mislead them all. So none of us will be saved except, except among them, your chosen servants. So none of us are immune to uh, shaitan's attack and all this, right? Except the chosen ones. And then Allah says, said, the truth is, the truth is my oath. And the truth I say that I will surely fill hell, <coughs> excuse me, hell with you and those of them that follow you all together. Here we have a great uh, threat, like we will be punished. So what do we do? Any psychologist, a deeper level, you know, uh, can, who knows the whole Quran, I so, you know, to use fear on someone like, in this way, uh, what happens? You have to end reasoning like this, uh, what shaitan says, a statement like this, uh, that, uh, None of us will be uh, immune from shaitan's attack and misleading us, except the chosen ones. So reading this ayat, what would happen? And then God says, I will fill hell with you and those of them that follow you all together. Hell. Sorry, not hellfire, but hell. Jahannam. <coughs> Excuse me. So this would mean that the fear has come and not even Allah's might can help us. Right? Because with Allah's might, shaitan is coming uh, right, left, for in every way. Even though there are Quran ayats, but then we have to follow the guidance of the messengers, chosen ones sent. And those, excuse me, those chosen ones are named in the Quran. 
who are the chosen ones? Abraham, family of Abraham. Imran, family of Imran. Jacob, Elisha, favored, you know, all these. Uh, Jesus, Moses, Abraham. Oh, repeating. So, we're naturally going to, what, what would this do to you? Would you be thinking? Or would there, uh, there be more fear than thinking, free thinking, free thought, that Imam Jafar Sadiq, good point there put by Imam Jafar Sadiq in Surah Al-Anam, in the commentary section, that you should not force these people and you should not even try to bring these people to this true religion, what he means by truth because they lack the dead people, they lack this mental faculty uh, of uh, coming to this, and integrity and sincerity. But wouldn't you say that also, uh, I don't know how to put this, wouldn't you say that, okay, they lack that, but then you're using also, f uh, this Quran eyes are using fear, So have you given, has your grandfather, Prophet Muhammad, did he give that freedom to those people back then? And then what happens when they don't have that sincerity and mental integrity, intellectual intel integrity? What happens to them? They will end up in the fire of hell or hell. So, when this verse comes down, what will these people, even the ones who don't, uh, I mean, who use reason or the fear is caused here, like, they look at this, 82, Iblis said, by your might, I will surely mislead them all. Do you think some hanky-panky? Like, you see, uh, by the pa thy power, God has allowed Iblis to mislead us all, except his chosen servants, by his might. And the fear is all, all in the wrong. Then Allah says, except the chosen servants, then Allah says, then that I will surely fill hell with you and those of them that follow you all together. So we have to, okay, obey. Maybe an, I take another way now, because I can't say this properly here. Uh, Surah Azab verse, right? We are told he's the best uh, counselor, marriage counselor. Mm, bless, a bless, who's, with whose blessings we can thrive in marriage save our marriages, have a blessed, what is a blessed marriage? So in Surah Az Azab, he doesn't leave Zainab and Josh. Momin, whatever God gives you, take it, right? And what uh, he's, whatever God has decided, Allah has decided for you and this messenger has decided for you, take it, this Allah's messenger. Surah Azab, verse 37, oh sorry, 36, right? Then uh, in the commentary section, we are told that uh, Imam Muhammad al-Baqar tells us that he was, um, the Zainab bin Josh was, uh, it wasn't a suggestion, but let's say even if it was a suggestion by Prophet Muhammad to marry Zaid, she didn't will it, but he, you know, he tried to um, convince her that this would be the best marriage for you. I'll bless it, Allah's blessing, favor, like it said for Zed. So, since I can't, the other way, I'll do it this way, right? I will tell you this way. You may think I'm shaitan. You see, you have, uh, because this Qur'an ayat is not, no one 
is safe from shaitans uh, leading astray. No one except the chosen ones. So, but listen to this shaitan. Maybe the shaitan is the one you are worshipping. I mean, the one <coughs> you are obeying and uh, all that. How shall I say it? So we go to Surah Azab. And our Imams, remember, they've also said that you should do shaitans. Haven't our Imams in Al Kafi, where did I read? That you should do shaitans a marifat. To know shaitan. So if you want to know, if you're a Shia, you would listen. You would listen to my side. Right? You have all the protection. You can go and say, Auzubillah, I'm in a shaitan lane or a jinn. You can say salwats later on. You can say, oh, Rasulullah, protect us from this. Uh, show us more guidance. Give us more understanding of these ayats, your wisdom in these ayats, in Allah's ayats and your word, maybe, or Jibrayim's word, according to Surah Taqweer ayat. So, uh, verse 30, you would listen if you are Shia. You see here, uh, it is not for a believer, man or woman, when Allah and His Messenger have decreed a matter that uh, they should have any option in their decision. And whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger, he has indeed strayed into a plain error. So we are told in the commentary section in Multilingual Quran I read, under this ayat, uh, that uh, Zainab was uh, actually uh, kind of forced, she didn't have a choice. But to Mary said, Ben Harith, against her will. And did that marriage work? No, it didn't work. It ended in divorce. And so God said, now you can even change your adopted son, the pagan you have erred. It's okay, you made a mistake, but that was unintentional. <coughs> and what are we told in another ayat that he doesn't earn? But we say, no, he, in God's wisdom, uh, Zaina Binja. Here it's really good in God's, pray to God. Because now you're this, you may be saying, okay, we're listening to Shaitan. Surah Saad ayat leaves, Shaitan leaves no one, except your, the Mukhlisin mentioned in the Quran ayat, right? So listen to this shaitan, because Imam has said, do shaitan's marifat also. Like, you know, understand shaitan's ways and all, heights. He has a lot of power, because he's using Allah's power, misusing it. Uh, so, here, uh, 37, then going to the pages loading. What happens? He tells, and remember, O Muhammad, when you said to the one on whom Allah bestowed favor, and you bestowed favor, keep your wife and fear Allah while you concealed within yourself that which Allah is to disclose. This is a great uh, guidance uh, counselor, marriage counselor. And you feared the people. He himself is fearing the people. And we say, no, this. I know what the Shia say about this, that Hazrat Musa also feared, conceived a fear in his heart. Did you know that the people will see this magic in Pharaoh's court or palace and then uh, 
you know, they believe in this magic. So that's how he feared the people because now God was going to change this adopted son, the pagan Arab custom that Prophet Muhammad had practiced adopting Zed as his son. He was going to change it and then have the divorce was also coming, the marriage failed, Rasulullah. So <clears throat> you see, Allah bestowed favor and you bestowed favor on Zed, right? That's good. But the marriage, did you bestow your blessings on this marriage? When we are told here, yes, you have no choice, you believers, but you will never. Uh, so he says, if you disobey Allah and His Messenger, you will be clearly in the wrong, on the wrong path. You will be out of Sirat al Mustaqim. Right? Going to hell. So, Again, I'm telling you to look at these ayahs, like, <coughs> you see, the marriage should not have failed with the blessings of Allah and the blessings of Rasulullah. But then we come, we jump to saying that, no, no, this is good interest for the whole of a marriage of believers. This is in, for here, when we look at this ayat 37, we go down and it says, and um, concerning the wives of their claimed, we married her to you in order that there not be upon the believers any discomfort, i.e. guilt, concerning the wives of their claimed i.e. adopted sons, so in the best interest of many Muslims, believers, sorry, believers. But like they say, like, uh, what is it, uh, two wrongs or uh, don't, you know, make uh, one right, or what is it? What do they say? So my mind, uh, I, I can't quote. See such a uh, what do you call it? So it doesn't make it right. I wish I had eloquence on this. You see, this part where the marriage fails of these two believers because they obeyed. <clears throat> it is not fitting for a believer, man or woman. So man, Zed, woman, Zainab bin Jaj, obeyed Rasulullah's, Allah's and Rasulullah's decision, right? Had no choice in it. They were compelled when they didn't even like Zainab bin Jaj, didn't want to marry Zainab. Right? So a believer fails, marriage fails. Believer fails, right? And what else is here? He is indeed on a clearly wrong path. If he disobeys Allah and his messenger, he becomes a disbeliever and he's clearly on the wrong path. So these two ayats, uh, they don't tally with the, uh, what we are told a believer, when he obeys Allah and his messenger, he becomes successful in his life and the hereafter, in everything in his life. Uh, believers should not be giving believers problems, right? Okay, there's an ayat which says, uh, what do you call it, like, uh, when uh, you say you believe but that you will not be tested and all this, 
But when Rasulullah, they surely have to succeed. Like Imam Ali said, I have succeeded. By the Lord of the Kaaba, I have succeeded. Even though he had many tragedies in his life. But he said, by the Lord of the Kaaba, I have succeeded. <coughs> So I don't know how the, these two believers could have succeeded. The marriage failed. Just so, what happens? So when Zaid had no longer any need of her, for her, he married her to you in order that there not be upon the believers any discomfort. Aren't Zainab and Josh and Zaid believers? What discomfort they had to go through to uh, get this. Prophet Muhammad didn't go through any discomfort regarding this. They were tested, let's say, if you say tests would come to the believers. These two poor couples were tested, distressed. Zena, we are told in the commentary section, was so distressed that then Muhammad had to marry her. So why are you saying that there should be no discomfort for the disbelievers uh, about concerning the wives of their claimed adopted sons? Poor Zed, poor Zainab bin Josh. Upon the believers, any discomfort. There seems to be a deception here. A great tragedy. And uh, I'm just lost with words now. I'm feeling something. Uh, so I've lost my ability to talk, uh, find words, proper words. So please look at this. And then perhaps again, I'll go back to Something like uh, the ayats where you would say again that Sarah, are you the Shaitan? Surah Shura Ayat 23, Chapter 42 of the Quran, and uh, Surah Saad Ayat 86 and 87. If you pretend her, what are you? <coughs> 80, uh, that I shall fill hell with thee and with uh, Surah Saad. He said the truth is, oh, well, again, I've lost, I've lost that Surah. Oh, sorry, I've lost the ayats. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Surah Saad, chapter 38. Uh, ayat 85 and 86, I'll start to slowly, slowly show you. Let's see if we can find an imposter, a pretender or not. Right? When Allah changed, had an exception, changed uh, this uh, reward thing for Prophet Muhammad uh, and this message. So I'll, I'll come here because I see a great tragedy happening uh, that, uh, you know, uh, Islam is a false religion and uh, blaming the de uh, idol worshippers, Jews, uh, th that they didn't follow their religion, that they were hypocrites. <clears throat> there were some good Jews too, Christians also, but then the Medes they became, and they had to pay jizya. And uh, these pagan idol worshippers also, and there are others who, you know, don't have this spiritual intelligence, integrity, uh, or intellectual integrity, like Imam Jafar Sadiq says. But no. 
your grandfather and Allah, you have not put any fear these ayats. But they say, no, no, uh, first use reason and uh, Rasulullah was there as a mercy. You could not have been scared. If you do the right thing, as the Quran has told you, you follow, then you will have no uh, fear of hellfire. Because hellfire is not for you believers. So then you won't even fear shaitan and his uh, no, God's might, by God's might he would mislead you and all this because you're with the chosen ones. But I feel something is wrong here. And like I explained, Surah Azab, verses 36, 37, uh, something is terribly wrong that I cannot not put in words properly. I need a genius. Do you know, remember the Quran that's like this? and uh, have that uh, eloquence to properly explain all these ayats are contradictory and what I feel I can sense is wrong in this religion now but I cannot say in proper words I'll try, I'll try again and come back later thank you so much